Sunday special episode to go over who is winning our league draft and all the trades that have happened. Oh, so many things happening in our league. While our league is about to fight for its life as Ellen Trekhand is freed from the void to wreak havoc on all of us, we're also in the final three weeks of the regular season. That means we have 11 weeks of statistics to get a clear picture of how we all did in our draft uh, and how we might possibly still do or if there's any way to fix what's happened so far. That's right, it's time for Winners and Losers, Part 2. Alright, let's begin by discussing the top three players at each position real quick. Top three quarterbacks, Josh Allen with 293.1 points is the top quarterback right now. 2,875 passing yards, 261 rushing yards, 29 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 3 fumbles lost. A lot of lost points there. You could be doing even better. Jalen Hurts is number two, 256.38 points, 2,497 passing yards, 345 rushing yards, 24 touchdowns. Nine interceptions and three fumbles lost. Again, like Allen, a lot of turnovers hurting the points. Justin Herbert is number three, 249.96 points, 2,609 passing yards, 186 rushing yards, 10 receiving yards, it's random, and to be honest, the rushing yards are also random, 22 touchdowns, only five interceptions, so, uh, you know, definitely not giving away a lot of points, but uh, could probably do better finishing and giving more touchdowns. Let's move on to running back. Top three running backs. Christian McCaffrey, 199.9 points. Number one, 825 rushing yards, 364 receiving yards, 14 touchdowns. Did have two fumbles lost. Obviously, the touchdowns are huge. 14 touchdowns for a guy? I mean, come on. Like, he's on pace to, to really have a big-time, big-time uh, season looking like could have been the number one overall pick. Raheem Mostert was a 10th-round pick, by the way. 160.9 points. 691 rushing yards, 158 receiving yards, 13 touchdowns, only one fumble lost, uh, and Bandito's traded to get Mostert, and uh, uh, he's probably hoping those touchdowns don't regress now, but that's a lot of touchdowns. Travis Etienne is number three, the elite mother tuckers, 148.2 points, 670 rushing yards, 282 receiving yards, eight touchdowns. Also, two two-point conversions. A very solid season for ETN so far. At wide receiver, Tyreek Hill is above everyone by a lot. 182.9 points, 1,222 receiving yards already. 17 rushing yards, too, because why not? Nine touchdowns. Very good for a wide receiver. Uh, did have one fumble lost. Keenan Allen has been very solid for the stellar pitches. 156.66 points, 1,011 receiving yards, 49 passing yards, 6 rushing yards, and 8 touchdowns. C.D. Lamb uh, has been solid for the Dreamcats, their best player by far. 140.7 points, 1,013 receiving yards, 54 rushing yards, 6 touchdowns, and a fumble lost. Moving on to tight end, George Kittle. Kittle is number one. Where did that even come from? 96 points for my gosh, Gia Slews. 648 receiving yards. Two rushing yards and five touchdowns. Uh, TJ Hawkinson is number two, risky business, 95.6 points, 736 receiving yards, four touchdowns, and a fumble lost. Travis Kelsey is a, a fourth overall pick by Banditos, 92.1 points, very disappointing. 641 receiving yards, five touchdowns, and a fumble loss. That is a high draft pick for not a lot of output. Uh, for tight end, and to not be the number one tight end, that's more salt to the wounds. Uh, kickers are always funny. Um, you know, a lot of these kickers weren't even drafted. Dustin Hopkins, 109 points, 750 plus yard field goals, 26 field goals altogether, 15 point afters. He didn't miss one PAT. Jason Myers has been solid for risky business, 99 points, 11 40 plus yard field goals, 23 total field goals, 19 point afters. 
Brandon McManus, who's on the Dreamcast bench at the moment, 95 points, 11 40-plus yard field goals, 20 total field goals, and 22 extra points. Not bad. Now we get into defense to close it out. The Dallas Cowboys, 145 points, 6 touchdowns, 33 sacks, 11 interceptions, 5 fumble recoveries, a safety, 2 block kicks. Uh, they've only allowed 175 points and only have allowed 2,663 yards. Very solid for risky business. The Baltimore Ravens, very solid for defending Chamblee Mother Tucker's 130 points, 44 sacks. That's a lot of sacks. 10 interceptions, 5 fumble recoveries, a safety, only one touchdown. So they got all those points and only have one touchdown. 169 points allowed, 3,008 yards allowed. So very solid as well. And then the Cleveland Browns, not drafted, but oh my gosh, Kia Slews, 123 points, uh, 33 sacks, 9 interceptions, 6 fumble recoveries, 2 touchdowns lately, 2 blocked kicks, 162 points allowed, 2,433 yards allowed. Of course, there are more players than this, so let's dive. Let's dive into the draft a little bit, discussing... Uh, some of the players with front that, that were picked up from our pre-draft trades and uh, some of the other trades going on. We'll try to get through this as quickly as possible. Starting with my gosh, he has lose with the pre-draft trade. Uh, I netted a third rounder, sixth rounder, and a ninth rounder, so I really wanted to look at what I got. Devontae Smith and Justin Fields were both taken in the third round. Christian Kirk was taken in the sixth round. Brian Robinson in the ninth round. Smith is the 21st wide receiver with 632 receiving yards and four touchdowns. Fields is the 20th quarterback with 1,370 passing yards, 341 rushing yards, 13 touchdowns, six interceptions, and two fumbles lost. Not the best. He has been injured, though. Kirk is the 28th wide receiver, 672 receiving yards, six rushing yards, minus one passing yards. So random. Uh, only three touchdowns. Also had two fumbles lost. That's going to hurt. Uh, Robinson has been a huge one, though. Fourth best running back right now. 558 rushing yards, 314 receiving yards, eight touchdowns, uh, one two-point conversion. Did have a fumble loss, uh, kind of canceling out the two-point conversion, I guess. Air Jordan uh, traded to get three fifth-round picks. Debo Samuel, James Conner, and Javante Williams were those picks. Uh, Samuel was later traded to Remember the Titans and now has been traded to Banditos Del Rio. Williams was traded to my gosh, he has Well, Williams is the 30th running back right now, 473 rushing yards, 125 receiving yards, two touchdowns, and a two-point conversion. Samuel is the 38th wide receiver, 123 rushing yards, 395 receiving yards, and three touchdowns. Connor is the 35th running back, 499 rushing yards, 31 receiving yards, and two touchdowns. Not the best haul there, Air Jordan. The multiple scoregasms received DeAndre Hopkins and James Cook in the sixth round from their trade, Antonio Gibson and Dalton Kincaid in the ninth round. Gibson and Kincaid were dropped, with Kincaid now on my gosh, he has Hopkins is the 18th wide receiver with 650 receiving yards, five rushing yards, and four touchdowns, three of those in one game. James Cook is the 13th running back, very solid, 688 passing yards, 251 rushing yards, three touchdowns, and a fumble loss. Gibson is the 44th running back and now a free agent in our league, only has 137 rushing yards, 269 receiving yards, and two touchdowns. Also has two fumbles lost. Uh, Kincaid is the 11th best tight end with 436 receiving yards and two touchdowns, um, and, and a lot of that's come lately. The elite mother tuckers picked up DK Metcalf and Justin Herbert in the fourth round and Gabe Davis and Pat Fryermuth in the ninth round. We already know about Justin Herbert. Pat Fryermuth was dropped and is now on Risky Business's team. Metcalf is the 26th best wide receiver with 646 yards and two touchdowns. Gabe Davis is the 32nd best wide receiver with 490 receiving yards, minus two rushing yards, five touchdowns, uh, a two-point conversion, and a lost fumble. Fryer Muth is the 39th best tight end with 60 yards and two touchdowns. Didn't miss a lot of time. The Clash Head Demon Head took the Jets defense and kicker Justin Tucker in the eighth round based on a trade from last season that netted two picks in that round. The Jets are the 10th best defense with 26 sacks, 10 interceptions, six fumble recoveries, two safeties, a touchdown, a block kick, 202 points allowed, and 3,163 yards allowed. Justin Tucker is the fourth best kicker. Seven 40-plus yard field goals, 19 total field goals, 33 point afters. He did miss a, an extra point, which is rare for Tucker. 
Uh, there were some others that from earlier in the season, I said we were going to watch these players, so I'm calling them out now. Derrick Henry was a mid-second round pick for my slews. Uh, now been traded to Air Jordan. Uh, he's the 10th best running back, 663 rushing yards, 167 receiving yards, two passing yards, and five touchdowns. DeAndre Swift was taken in the eighth round and has been traded to remember the Titans uh, to Banditos Del Rio. Swift is the eighth best running back with 690 rushing yards, 197 receiving yards, five touchdowns, and a two-point conversion. Michael Thomas was traded by Air Jordan to my slews and is now dropped in a free agent in our league after an injury. He was really disappointing anyway. Thomas was an 11th round pick, 53rd best rod receiver, 448 receiving yards, just one touchdown. Miles Sanders was taken in the fourth round by Loki Lebowski Thorne as the 49th best running back with 274 rushing yards, 120 receiving yards, a touchdown, and two lost fumbles. Kirk Cousins was taken in the fifth round by the Siamese Dreamcats and is now out for the season. Cousins was doing well and is still the 16th best quarterback with 2,331 passing yards, 25 rushing yards, four lost fumbles, 18 touchdowns, and five interceptions. Elvin Kamara was taken in the seventh round for the Elite Mother Tuckers and has now been traded to Air Jordan. Kamara missed the first three games of the season and is still the 24th best running back with 388 rushing yards, 205 receiving yards, and three touchdowns. The multiple scoregasms took the 49ers defense in the 8th round. They are currently the 7th best defense, 27 sacks, 14 interceptions, 5 fumble recoveries, 157 points allowed, and 3,028 yards allowed. Jamison Williams was taken in the 10th round for Banditos Del Rio and is now a free agent in our league. Williams is the 94th best wide receiver, which is the 133 receiving yards and 2 touchdowns. He did miss 5 games. Christian Watson was a fifth round pick for the Clash at Demon Head. Watson is the 73rd best wide receiver, 257 receiving yards, minus four rushing yards, and two touchdowns. Watson has missed three games, just to call that out. Anthony Richardson was a fifth round pick for Risky Business. He's now out for the season, was a promising young quarterback. He's the 30th quarterback now, but he was injured pretty early. 577 passing yards, 136 rushing yards, seven touchdowns. One interception, one fumble lost in just uh, four games. Deontay Johnson was taken in the sixth round for the Stellar Bitches. Johnson was dropped, picked up by Banditos, and traded to remember the Titans. It's the 70th best wide receiver, 335 receiving yards, just one touchdown. Jonathan Taylor was the fifth round pick for Green Acres. Taylor is currently the 36th best running back with 323 rushing yards, 137 receiving yards, and three touchdowns. He also missed four weeks. Some other drafted players that were traded. Stephon Diggs was the ninth overall pick for Air Jordan and has been traded to my slews. Diggs is the fifth best wide receiver with 895 receiving yards, seven touchdowns, and a fumble lost. Michael Pittman was a seventh round pick for my slews and is now traded to Air Jordan. Pittman is the 20th best wide receiver with 677 receiving yards and three touchdowns. Raheem Mostert was a 10th round pick by the Stellar Bitches and is now traded to Banditos Del Rio. Uh, we discussed his numbers earlier, of course. Eric Jordan selected Brees Hall in the fourth round, and uh, he's been traded to remember the Titans. Hall is one of the better running backs in the league at this point. Cooper Cup was chosen in the second round by Eric Jordan and has been traded to the elite Mother Tuckers. Cup is the 61st wide receiver who missed four games. He has 375 receiving yards and just one touchdown. Zay Flowers was taken by the elite Mother Tuckers in the 10th round and is now traded to Eric Jordan. Flowers is the 39th best wide receiver with 588 receiving yards, 19 rushing yards, and just one touchdown. So after going through all that and my brain going nuts with all these statistics, who won and who lost the draft as of now, uh, I look at three factors. How many draft picks are still on the team? Uh, what about the consistent starters and, and where they were in the rankings, which round they were taken, and even if a player was traded, did they help with the current record? Also, what is your current record? That's all that matters, right? So let's go through each team. Low-key Lebowski Thor. Let's go through some of the notes here. He lost Justin Jefferson. It was the number one overall pick for multiple weeks now. Mike Williams and J.K. Dobbins are out for the year. Only Jefferson is expected to return out of those, obviously, but has missed more than half the season so far. Nine drafted players are still on the team. Jalen Hurts has been the one standout. Jefferson was a standout early in the season before the injury. Current record is 3-8. and eight. Verdict? Loser! Risky business. Uh, obviously lost quarterback Anthony Richardson for the season. Defense and kicker picks, though, have been huge. 14th and 15 rounds, killing it. Top four picks are all successful so far. 
nine drafted players still on the team. Record is six and five. I'm going to have to say winner. But I do got to say missing the playoffs could change this. But right now a winner. The clash at team in head. Uh, Andrews is now out for the season at tight end, which hurts. Eight drafted players still on the team. Best quarterback is going to help, but others have been inconsistent. Jets, D, and Tucker have been good, but not for those draft picks. Pacheco was a nice pick in the seventh round, but Chase has not lived up to his pick. The record is 6-5. and five. So this one's tough, but right now my verdict is loser with a chance to become a winner with a strong finish. I mean, obviously right now a loser, uh, but uh, there's some, it's close. It's very close. Banditos Del Rio, disappointing first three picks here. I mean, none are living up to their pick. Walker is banged up now as well and could miss time. Six players still on the team. Evans has been a nice surprise out of the sixth round. Madison was good for a few games, now traded. Uh, my verdict here is probably surprising with a 7-4 and four record for Banditos being in first. I'm going to say, loser! And even with a Green Bull title, it's probably not going to change this. I mean, you look at this, this was not a good draft. Trades and a strong start for Kelsey and Mahomes are really the reason why Banditos are where they are and why they have potential to win the league. Remember the Titans? Five players left from the draft. Uh, which uh, is not great. <laughs> Chubb is out for the season, is one of the players that's gone, unfortunately. Najee Harris was traded. Waller's been on IR. Ayuk was traded and then traded back, so Ayuk's back. Swift was a great pick in the 8th round, but is now traded. The Saints defense was a great pick in the 14th round, but Waddle hasn't lived up to the draft pick. Jackson has been inconsistent for a 3rd round quarterback pick. The record is 7-4, and four, but again, verdict? Loser! Trades and some luck is really what's driving Remember the Titans right now, and he's probably not going to disagree, especially with uh, Swift gone. I mean, that makes his draft even worse, technically, as Swift's not going to be helping him down the stretch. Moving on to my Goshkia Slews. Uh, this one hurts me so much. Eckler missed four games. That hurts. Henry's now traded. He did help while he was on the team, though. He was a nice pick. Smith and Fields have not lived up to their potential at all. Fields did have an injury. Uh, Kittle looks like a very strong tight end pick. Robinson is clearly the best pick out of the ninth round. Uh, Goff wasn't a bad pick either in the 12th round. Seven players are left from the draft, but the record is four and seven. My verdict for myself, loser due to Smith's struggles. Fields' injury and the slow start as well from Fields. Uh, Kirk's lack of touchdowns has really been disappointing as well. The stellar bitches, so let's look at them. Robinson was being limited for strange reasons earlier, but uh, has come on a little bit lately. Adams had a terrible quarterback and offense limiting him, but he's also been coming out a little bit lately, at least the last game. Burrow's out for the season and has been injured all year. That's been tough. Uh, Allen and White were nice picks in the fourth and fifth rounds. Schultz was a nice pick in the seventh round. Mostert was a great pick in the tenth round, even though he's now traded. 12 players still on the team from the draft, 7-4 record. My verdict, winner! Ellen and Mostert are the reason why the Stellar Bitches are in a divisional race. Those are great, great draft picks. White has been strong lately as well. And, and again, like I said, Adams has picked it up a little bit. This could change depending to the finish of the season after the Mostert trade. But right now, clear winner. Green Acres now. Tyreek Hill living up to his draft pick. Wilson and Stevenson have not. Higgins has been good when healthy. Taylor seems to be a steal now with his resurgence. Goddard might have been picked too high, but is doing okay when healthy. Uh, Warren is with another team now, which hurts. And Geno Smith and Deshaun Watson are not the best quarterbacks on the team. An undrafted one is. Record is 7-4, and four, but due to waiver prowess and seven players left on the team from the draft, but only one really being a consistent starter, my verdict here? Loser! Auto draft loser could change if Stevenson helps and Taylor keeps rising in the rankings, but uh, clearly waiver pickups and have been uh, really the key for Green Acres. Air Jordan now, and uh, I'm sure this one hurts his soul. Only two or three players remain on Air Jordan. I say that because he's picked up a couple players and dropped them and picked them up again. Uh, Diggs was solid, but traded to my Salus now. Cup and Hall were traded. Samuel traded. Williams traded. Godwin and Montgomery traded. 
There were some weeks where these players did help get a couple wins, but after an 0-4 start and a 4-7 record, with mostly trades and waiver pickups helping lately, my verdict, loser, and making the playoffs not even going to save it, certainly a lost draft for Air Jordan. The elite mother tuckers, the defending champs, how did they go? Well, A.J. Brown has been a just baller besides last week. ETN's been great, too. Those are some good top picks. Herbert, obviously, is steal in the fourth round. Kamara helped a little before being traded. Uh, Jacob's not lived up to the draft pick, but he did have some good weeks, which helped with some wins. DJ Moore has been good, but not consistent as a starter. Uh, but also, I do want to call out Young Wei Ku, Ravens defense, huge 13th and 14th round picks. Been a big reason why they're 6-5. and five. Uh, They also have nine players still here. Uh, when you look at uh, the star power that they had early on and the fact that they got a good defense and kicker that they're, they, they don't even have to think about uh, once buys are over, the verdict, uh, a winner. The defending champs, a winner here, but barely. I do want to say that making the playoffs might be a tiebreaker. Uh, trades look to be what's helping now, so that will be taken into account next time. But right now, winner. The Siamese Dreamcats are next. Tony Pollard, not even close to first-round pick potential. This has just been a bust of a pick. CeeDee Lamb has been great, though, out of the second round. That's been a great pick. A.A. Ron Jones, injured too much. Pitts in London, busts. The Eagles defense, solid, but not eighth-round pick solid. Cousins is done for the year. Was good then, but then you got to look at the backup. Brock Purdy, a fantastic 11th-round pick. Uh, Dobbs is actually a decent 13-round pick, uh, Romeo Dobbs. Ten players still on the team, record 4-7. and seven. Verdict? I think this one's a little closer, but still loser. Not enough firepower at the top. Too many misses in the early to middle rounds. Uh, you know, just needed a couple more stars to come out of this draft. Probably a big reason why they're 4-7. and seven. Lastly, we get to the multiple scorgasms. Barkley and Amon Rao St. Brown have shown abilities, but they really haven't lived up to their draft pick potential in my eyes based on their stats. Trevor Lawrence is not even close to a fourth-round quarterback pick, but can finish strong to fix that. Hopkins was a disappointment, clearly. Uh, Cook and Addison were both good, and they both helped throughout the year. The 49ers' defense have been good, but not eighth-round good because of a lack of touchdowns. Eleven players are still on the team. Verdict, five and six. Uh, with the record at 5-6, and six, I have to say loser with only a playoff berth having a chance to change it. In my mind, just too many misses early on and a mistake drop at tight end with Kincaid Hurt. What about the strategies, overall strategies? People are always interested in that. Well, choosing running backs early, I would say risky business is high on that list. Took two running backs early and uh, Christian McCaffrey, Joe Mixon, both are doing very well for his team. Choosing wide receivers early, Green Acres, because he got Tyree Hill, which is a killer pick. Uh, but I'd say medium, because his other pick was Garrett Wilson. Auto draft killed him. I don't think he would have took Wilson. Choosing a tight end early, Banditos. That is low. That is terrible strategy. Still, to this day, Kelsey is not worth a fourth overall selection based on his numbers. That's rough. But in the end, all that matters is if you win the league, right? So what do these trends predict as of today? <laughs> That the draft was a surprising dud for most of us. Rankings meant nothing. Projections, useless. Strategy was hurt by the new offensive styles of the NFL. Running back committee spreading the ball around. Trick plays, the tush push, taking away touchdowns from guys. And not finding ways to get stars the ball in some games. And, and obviously coaching is the biggest reason for this. Seriously, what is up with some of the play calling? What's going on? Trades, waivers, and luck have been kind of bigger factors in the draft for us this year. Injuries obviously mean more losers in the draft. Luck can help get a, a, a team could get a winning record, just how the matchups fall and waivers can bring a team back from a rough draft. You know, I do want to mention that Risky Business, the Stellar Bitches, and the Elite Mother Tuckers are the only three on the winner's side right now. But the finish to the season, and we, when we go over the final statistics at the end, might lead to more winners from the draft. Just right now, I can't see it being more than those three. And it might also lead to more pre-draft trades and more emphasis on other things that usually isn't covered in fantasy articles, coaching, team expectations, etc. Uh, might be more important than rankings. In-season in trading will probably go up based on uh, how the season ended here as well. Could go down too. I don't know. But when all these crazy things happen, and let us know how your 12-team draft stacks up to any of our teams in the comments. 
And trash talking is fine. We deserve it. I mean, nine losers from the draft? This is garbage. And that's the segment for the week. <laughs> of course, we'll be back on Wednesday with results uh, from week 12. Uh, so much stuff going on there. And next Sunday, we'll have a fun special segment with the Game of the Week winners from weeks 1 through 8 um, as they answer questions to see which character they are from the show The League. Uh, if you haven't seen that show, you should. It's a great show. Uh, it's going to be a blast and an escape from normal fantasy talk, especially for us struggling, struggling, you know, hurts the soul when, when, you're, when you know that the playoffs are probably out of your reach. But, you know, we're going to go down to the end, go down with our ship. Before you go, check out the overall standings in the league. And until next time, salut.